Alright, so here we have a nice set of Sony headphones that always break, just like the Beats ones in the corners. And here we have some David Clark ones. Amazing construction, nothing to fault, a little tight on the head. But yeah, so now we're about to put these headphones with their Bluetooth fu um, functionality inside the reliable case of this one. So with the David Clark, you start off with these guys. All they are is a little uh, clip and you just pull them off like your rubber seal and sit them over to the side. And then you have a first bit of padding and then a second bit of padding around the edge and then you are left with the speaker and two little screws that yeah and then she pops right out and that's it so let's see how we go with the next step so with the sony one so far i've undone four screws on the left side where the control is just be careful when you lift up as it's got some tape underneath there and yeah i will label these ones shortly and show you all so once you've pulled the tape back you get a little more slack little arrows you can actually take this little guy out and then we can get the speaker off so now that you've undone and got this one separated you can lay it nice and flat and have a close look to see where the ports and the buttons and all that kind of stuff is now when we take a closer look at this guy it seems that sony has decided to glue these in so you can't actually change them so I'm going to have to cut these speakers out or something. So, yay! Fucking idiots. Okay, here we are. Close look at the board. You can see the uh, screw there and there that I've taken out. And now the board should pop out. Still got all the soldered connections there. I'm just getting a closer look. And, yeah, label every one of them before they get desoldered. And, yeah, we'll get now looking at the other side we have some tape on there as well and looks like we've got the volume controls and things like that over this side so yeah and I think the battery is under here we will take it all apart and see what we can do about transferring it to this set over here all right so under the under the e cup we've got its nice lithium ion 3.7 volt 610 milliamp hours battery and I'm not sure what this Sony thing x2587461-1 is for so yeah taking the headband and everything apart because i need the wire that goes through but um honestly this thing is an overcomplicated piece of junk where this nice simple sturdy and doesn't break overcomplicated plastic bullshit looking at the order of these wires so i can solder them back on blank so yeah when you're getting this apart and you're trying to get it through this curve section there's little plastic bit you can pull off but you need a small tiny little knife or something to get around i got in the top there and just popped it out and so yeah Furthermore, there's a little metal pin that gets put in there which stops the cable from passing through. So just pull it out and then the cable should come through freely. Alright, with this Sony piece, there's a tab there and a tab underneath on this side. Then you can push it through, it's glued. Then you can take this guy out, which I believe is the uh, Bluetooth wireless antenna. So, yeah. Alright, so here we have our power input that charges the battery and everything. This is the um, input for your 3.5mm um, plug and microphone. I'm going to see if I can wire in the microphone from the headset and use it. And yeah, I'm going to change the 3.5mm um, yeah, standard one. So that way I don't have to use this proprietary weird Sony one. Earlier I mentioned this little cover for the curve section, just pry this out with a very fine blade and it should pop out and you should be able to grab it with a pair of tweezers. And then, uh, yeah, just pop everything out, break the plastic, don't care, the wire is the most important piece. And just breaking everything else to get the wire out and yeah, 
Um, I probably have to wire in new wire anyway, and I'm probably going to put in a new bigger capacity battery, and it should be sweet. Okay, this is in the David Clark ones. I've taken out all the padding, and it's nice and simple, plenty of room, robust design, fan friggin' tastic. So this one I'm talking talking about that one then there's a second one that goes around you take this out and then there's a pad behind that you take out so yeah and I assume there's a couple little extra connectors for you know the microphone and whatnot on this side so yeah really got to commend these guys on the robustness it's like throw in screw to connect these speakers it's great now I got to see if I can get um, this to go with uh, these speakers here they look to be about the same size so yeah maybe we'll see so yeah really got to commend these guys on the robustness it's like throw in screw to connect these speakers it's great now i got to see if i can get um this to go with uh these speakers here they look to be about the same size so yeah maybe we'll see so yeah, with these uh, little speakers, they go in there and they have just four little tabs around the edges as you can see. You just pry them and you can take it out. Now I just need another speaker to sit in here and then I can mount it back in. So what I've done is I've just cut these speakers on the wire instead of desoldering them just because uh, it's easier to connect the wires than it is to resolder on here. and burn off traces by accident because they're so fine. Now the plan is to make an adapter with my 3D printer when I cut these out. So, if it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these out, the speakers, in their little plastic housing and then make an adapter with my 3D printer so that way they can sit within the ring and then I can uh, screw them down nice and tightly in their space. So I got these speakers out of the headphones, now I just need to make an adapter so it fits in the ring. So time for an upgrade for the battery so I get longer life. So old one 610 milliamp hours, new one is 1020. So almost 100%, something about 75-80% um, upgrade. So see I've got negative and positive, not going to use the middle one there. But uh, yeah, let's see how she works. As you can see the goldish shine has stopped and now it's silver. So I've tinned both the positive and negative and now it's time to attach some wires. So yeah. Um, what I've done so pre-tip the wire but also you can see there's a touch of extra solder on the wire here that's so I can just go dab and she's all done without trying to get this big um, thing in there it's all the solder I've got but it's really good solder alright so I changed my soldering iron tip now so now I should get much cleaner joints than the one that's in there you can probably see is not the best but it's functional I might redo it so now that I've got that new tip and put these on, measure with my multimeter here and she measures up 3.8 volts just like she's supposed to. So yeah, um, battery is almost done. So yeah, this is what she looks like with the battery underneath. You can kind of see in there with the uh, adapter I made for the speaker so it'll fit in the, you know, little guy they got there. Now let's screw it in, but I also need to fit the electronics probably over the other side there. So here we have um, the second reiteration. What I've got is little clips under there, so you put it down and you twist and it's locked in place. Unfortunately, it does once every 120 degrees for those. There, there, there. But um, the actual clamping mechanism is done every 90 degrees, so it kind of overlaps. So I was unable to, uh, yeah, on this one, on that one, get one done. So the plan is to just put a little dab of glue right there. 
that way it'll hold in place but also removable because I can just reprint one of these little red um, plastic adapters I made with the 3D printer. So just snap it off if need to, redesign a new one and print it out. But I think this one. So yeah, I've got the uh, adapters in the metal holders and then the speakers in. I've put a dab of glue there and there to hold this one down. The other two little clamps will hold it on the other respective sides. Now just waiting for it to dry. So yeah, under the magnifier. These little wires here for SP plus and minus, they are for each of the speaker. So yeah, going to uh, put some heavier gauge or thicker wires on that because those two little thin, thin things just won't do. So yeah, as the speaker that comes off this little PCB is the right ear, I'm going to go with the automotive colours and use uh, grey for uh, right front so yeah so I had to trim and thin the wire out because it was a little large for the pad but uh, yeah she's a nice fit now and this is heavily magnified so yeah little fiddly so yeah every time you move these thin wires break because they're only small individual strands you want them tough so they stay so they need to be solid core, but they're just so tiny anyway that they just act like flexible and they break when you twist them. Alright, one ear cut where I've got the battery and everything sorted out. Now now I'm going to put the solder on the speaker and get it in. Alright, speaker soldered on, now time to put it in. So now I'm working on the other ear cup. We've got all our inputs from the other side, which will be connected and speaker. This is the little included microphone, which shall be connected up to the microphone of these headphones. This is the input for three and a half mil. If your device doesn't have Bluetooth and you want to use the old school plug, you need power input and then uh, bass boost and power or vice versa. So yeah, let's get started. So yeah, always double checking connections before I uh, solder them onto the corresponding other side with all the wires there. So yeah, just a helpful tip, always double check. Alright, update. Working on the boost and power buttons. So pressing the little switch, that tells me that uh, these two are connected and in the right spot. And now to do the either power or boost. I don't remember which one. But uh, yeah, one of them is this. It doesn't really matter. Anyways, um, yeah, on to the next one. Alright, so these different colors with different switches. Um, it doesn't matter on the polarity of them. But uh, yeah, with the colors going for like an old school kind of theme with electronic wiring colors, anyways. So when you press that button in, all is well. Now it's time to flip it over and wire in my own um, socket that's extended out through the ear cups. So I've got the headphone extension lead which will end up being the socket so I can plug one in if I want to listen to something that doesn't have Bluetooth. And got the wires here and it will be soldered to the back of the socket here. I've got this one plugged in so I can use multimeter. Do some testing with this so yeah I can see which point marks up with the uh, left, right and ground. So I've got the uh, left, right and the ground leads. Um, the ground is actually working as the sheath as well so I'm just going to put a bit of heat shrink on there so that way they're all length and this won't uh, short anything out when they're all soldered onto the board. Use some super glue because the heat shrink didn't go quite far enough so I just put 
just a dab at the end there so it won't go back and forth and covered up the excess that was showing at the rear there. There you got this headphone jack wired in. It's got some extra but you know it'll all look good once I tidy it up. So unfortunately the pad got torn off when um, the speaker was in everything was placed together so I've scratched back part of the PCB and got a little more there to uh, solder onto so yeah so yeah all soldered on now I've got to do the speaker side but using something longer and a lot more forgiving in flexibility all right packing it all up with extra padding as the old ones kind of falling apart so got nice fluffy stuff so with the headphones, um, one of the other drivers got damaged, so I've got this older set of ATH-900s from Audio-Technica, and yeah, going to put the drivers in there. I've had these for years, broken in a parts box. Just noticed, made in Japan. No wonder these drivers still work after years of being randomly in a parts bin. <laughs> uh, but yeah, really impressed with the quality of these, but I'm going to have to design and make another adapter so it'll fit in the other ones. So there's no way this driver is going to fit in um, that little one there, that little adapter or even the frame. So I'm just going to have to make my own with the ends as well. So yeah, it's 3D design time. So yeah, this is it's supposed to sit in there, but that way and those little uh, things will be plastic clips so to hold it nice and firmly inside and then with the screw holes uh, I can fasten it tight in there so I just got to do the other clip and then I shall get the first one printed and take a look and possibly do any modifications needed to the design so yeah you can see this flips over clips in with the clips and then it screws down into position so that way it's held up by the lower lip and held down by the clips and fastened into place. Now what I need to do is trim off some excess so it actually fits within the... So yeah, you can see I've trimmed off the excess on both sides so now it might be time to print. So yeah, I'm about to print these two. Let's see how we go when I put it on the actual printer. All right, test fit. This is the new one. And that's the old one. So yeah, much larger speaker, wider frequency range, and generally better quality than uh, even the Sony ones that I had in. And much better than the originals, so yeah. All sweet, keep working on it, and we'll get there. Alright, so this is what the speaker looks like when it's inserted with the little adapter. It's got a little recess in there and this is the cover to hold, uh, hold it firmly pushing that way and I've got the two clips holding it in, pushing it down so it's nicely within the inner ring. The two mounting holes are there and I had yeah, just, just a melted touch at the top and bottom deliberately with the soldering iron. It's about half a mil on each side that way it fits in the gap in there so time to assemble all right so here we have the um, microphone and the green is your ground and two signals that are run together are bridge between the ground with resistor orange black Alright, so it turns out there's a break in the line somewhere, so I need to take apart this box and redo the line and find out where the break is. So, yay, got to pull this guy apart now. So, this is what we've got on the inside. Chances are the capacitors need replacing, but I can't be fucked. I am just going to go around all of it and, uh, yeah, just bypass it. So, I got the mic hooked up and uh, about to put it in and then remount it all. So I 3D printed the adapter, fitted the mic in, got the little seat so it doesn't uh, go too far in 
and bottom them out. We've got all cables lined up, plugged in, things wired up in there. And I should have it playing from the PC, if you guys can hear me. Testing, one. So here we are, I've gone with the wire because it's a lot easier and I don't have another Bluetooth module to do. So 53mm drivers from the last ones that I put in. Got these pads from those headphones and it's removable cable and infinitely adjustable. I intend on yeah, volume control through here. So it's adjustable, but it's completely usable and works really well. The mic has been nice and clear and great. So yeah, that's it for um, this little update. I'll probably add on a little bit extra when I do some work with the volume control.